Good morning. Today I wanted to uh, talk about meditation for inner peace that creates world peace. Um, and I want to talk about it briefly, and then we will do a meditation that brings us into contact with our own inner peace, and we can radiate that out into the world. So when the world around us is very obviously in conflict, and there's a lot of fear, uh, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of media coverage that's very difficult um, and very sensational, it's very easy to get pulled into all of that, um, to go along with whatever's presented and see the picture that they want you to see. But in this situation, we're really called even more to detach. Um, and the reason we're called to detach is that's the only way that we can discriminate and remain in a place where we're useful in helping the conflicts in the world. So meditation is the key to connecting to your own inner peace. And when we do this, we raise our vibration and it's like that light, that inner peace within us radiates out. It literally radiates out into our energy field. And it's like we're moving through the world, um, radiating peace everywhere we go. And when enough people do this, it, it goes out to help to, um, to counteract a lot of the very heavy, very dark, very fearful energy that comes when we have a world conflict, especially when the media hype up the world conflict and people feel threatened and fearful. So if you think of our planet as a living entity and she has an energy field around her, she has layers like her own aura, like we have around our body. And all of the emotions and thought forms of the beings on this planet contribute to those layers of energy. So when we have world events that are very fearful, very threatening, lots and lots of people drop their vibration and drop their energy, their minds are focused on fear, and the ramifications and, and projecting all the worries and doubts. And what happens is that energy goes out and surrounds our planet. And so it's like where we, even if you're not fearful, you become so that we're living in an environment of this dark, negative, heavy, fearful energy. And that can affect even the, um, the lightest in even people who are really centered in their heart and in their soul. So what we have to do is be aware of this and A, not contribute to it by not letting ourselves drop down into those fearful thoughts and by keeping our vibration high and by meditating on our inner light and keeping that raised energy of positivity and hope and trust and essentially love. So we stay centered in our heart and we stay centered in love and connection and trust that whatever is playing out will play out in a way that will ultimately have a good result. And what we also need to do is because when you're lifted, when you're radiating your light, when you're connected with your inner peace, that ri rise in your vibration counteracts much of the negativity. I mean, the figures are that it only requires 15% of people to remain in the light, to work on their inner peace, to counteract the negativity of the other 85% of people. And this is because negativity and fear are very dense, low vibrational energies. And light and love and trust and hope and courage and compassion more than anything are very light, very high vibrational energies. And so they move a lot quicker and they it's like that cloud that's around the earth. It's like we're dissipating it with our light. And so in this way, we have a responsibility both to ourselves to keep our own self centered in love and not give in to the fear and the doubt. And one of the best things to do is to turn off the media 
um, because then you've not got that energy coming into your energy field. And the other thing is to, to actively cultivate your connection to your own inner peace so that your light shines and you can help other people who are immersed in the fear. Because just by being in the light, you're helping those who are struggling to find their light and struggling to, to be in that light. And I want to explain a little bit about the difference between compassion and pity, because this is very important when we have world events where we see particular examples or we see mass suffering. Um, we can be pulled into either compassion or pity, and they have very different results um, in terms of helping those people and in terms of their effect on us. So compassion, compassion is an expression of love and action. It's a higher heart energy. It's a soul energy, and it's a very positive um, force in the world. It brings creative solutions. It Compassion enables a clear, focused mind. Pity, on the other hand, is an emotion associated with the lower centers, with the solar plexus. Pity has an aspect of attachment to it. Uh, pity tends to bring us down into lower vibrational energies and bring us down so we're almost suffering with the person who we have pity for. So I say to people, think of the analogy that someone's in a bad place, they've fallen in a pit in the ground, so they're in a hole and they can't get out. So pity, if we pity them, it's like emotionally we've jumped into the hole with them. And now, yes, they've got company in the horrible place they're in, but there's two of us in the hole and no one's any closer to getting out. If we have compassion, Compassion is where we stay a little bit detached emotionally, but our mind is clear and we stand at the edge of the hole and we encourage them. We may lower down um, a ladder that's a mental construct to help them climb out themselves and we give them a hug when they do. So do you see the difference? Compassion is actually useful. So compassion is where you can view the world situation, you can view world conflict, you can view it with slight detachment, so you're not getting emotionally pulled into it, and unfortunately our media tries to emotionally pull us into this mass fear, into this mess, um, what well, it's, it's to do with our astral, our astral emotional nature. Um, so by remaining slightly detached, it means you can then think, okay, what can I do? What can I do to alleviate this suffering? And that is the place of compassion. You still are feeling very much for those people, but it's not paralyzing you. It's not bringing so much fear into your being that you're of no use whatsoever. You can remain in your light. And it might be that all you can do is choose the organizations that are on the ground helping and send them some energy, some money, some prana to help with the humanitarian aid, with the medical supplies, etc. It might be that you decide you can join a group meditation when we're sending love and light and peace out into the world to try and dissipate that negative energy that creates conflict. It might be that you can just send your loving thoughts to the people who are suffering. It might be you can take a more active role. You know, there might be refugees you can help. There might be um, fundraising you can do. There's, there might be things you can donate. There's always something you can do, but you do that from a place of compassion and you do that with a clear mind and an understanding that we are all connected and so that when you, you find the best way to help your brother, your sister who's suffering, you don't help them by jumping in the hole with them and giving in to your own fears and going isolated. You connect. What can I do? I'm part of the world. These people are me and I am them. We are one. What can I do? And one of the most important things you can do 
is to remain in your own inner peace because the more people that do that, the more that energy radiates out into the world. And we know from studies, we know from the Maharishi effect that this does have a positive effect on reducing conflict. So often intuitively, you'll come up with deeper meditation the way that you can help. And it might be that you realize there's going to be repercussions in your own community when we've got two sides. We're in Libra at the moment, the scales. We've got Mars and Scorpio causing, you know, stirring up old conflicts, bringing issues to the surface. There's always two sides. It might be realizing there's two sides to this. We may only be presented with one and that really peace is found on that middle path between the two pairs of opposites. And if you think of it like a triangle, the conflict is like the base of the triangle, working out on the personality ego level of either people, nations, leaders. It's all personality, lower vibrational stuff. But the apex of the triangle, that central point, that fulcrum is the soul. And this is the higher self. And this is where the wisdom comes through that will um, balance and bring back to equilibrium and peace the warring pairs of opposites. And this is really in Libra what we're asked to do. And we're seeing this play out on the world stage at the moment. So by understanding this, you can consciously decide what you are going to do to help. Um, and that is your act of service to the world that comes from a place of your buddhic nature, your compassionate, loving, kind nature. And it means that you don't get pulled into this miasm of fear and doubt, and you don't contribute to that dark, that heavy vibrational energy. You keep your energy raised. And it might be that you just you go over and connect with a neighbor who has beliefs or is of a race that you know is going to be targeted as a result of this. It might be that you foster relations somehow between groups of opposing views. It might be that you become the diplomat and the negotiator. And remember your actions speak louder than your words. So it might just be that you let someone know, you know, we're, we're all human, we're all united on the highest level. It doesn't matter um, a lot of the issues that are in conflict. And so what you your responsibility, if you like, is to keep your vibration high by staying centered in your heart, by choosing love over fear, to ex to know the difference between compassion and pity. And if you feel yourself being pulled into pity, you climb back out so that you're standing on the edge, ready to help uh, so that you can put love in action. So now what we're going to do is, and all of these things, meditation teaches you that detachment. Every time you you focus, refocus on the object of meditation. Every time you come back to the breath, every time you come back to the witness, you are detaching from your emotional nature that tends to be caught up in the thoughts that run, and you are choosing to witness. And that is the place, the place of the silent witness is the place where we connect with our compassion. And this the Buddhists talk about thinking in the heart, and really that is loving kindness, that is compassion. And it helps to develop discrimination, and discrimination protects our mind from propaganda and coercion, from fear-induced psychic effects. So when you have a strong mind, you see there are there's always truth and varying degrees of truth, and there's always two sides to everything. And you slowly open to standing under ever greater truths, to understanding ever greater truths. And this is the power of meditation to, to protect your mind and to, to develop that capacity of discrimination so that you can show discernment in the actions that you choose to take. And they're based on love 
and connection, not fear and isolation. So that's all I wanted to say. Hopefully that helps give you a path um, to navigate the world situation in terms of your own response to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a meditation in which we connect deeply with our own inner peace. And then we're going to use our capacity of visualization to radiate that peace out. And I think what we'll do also is we might visualize the world surrounded in peace and that peace flowing down into the hearts and minds of all so that we can contribute to bringing the world back into a place of harmony. So get yourself comfortable sitting reasonably upright, just relaxing your shoulders. Feet flat on the floor, better if your feet are uncrossed, hands resting lightly in your lap. And gently close your eyes. And the first thing I want to do is to connect with our beautiful earth. So imagine that you are sending a connection, an energy connection from the soles of your feet down into the ground under the building in which you are. So that we remind ourselves that we are part of the whole. You can also send a connection from your base chakra at the very base of your spine. So you're grounded. Now bring your awareness into your physical body and just become aware of the feeling of sitting on the chair, the feeling of the clothes on your skin, the play of air in the room. And now bring your awareness to your sense of listening, of hearing, just Hear the sounds and let them come in. Let them be as they are. And now take that same awareness, that same focus to your breath. And just breathing naturally with each in breath let the breath get a little deeper so you imagine that you're opening a channel deep inside of your chest between your sternum your breastbone and your spine this is deep in our emotional heart we're just opening this space gently until it feels comfortable to breathe a little deeper to breathe into your belly as you breathe in, to let your tummy come back towards your spine as you breathe out. But finding a rhythm that feels very natural, slow and deep. And this will relax your physical body. And as your physical body relaxes, bring your focus to the breath with your mind. Just notice the breath come in, notice the breath leave. Follow its path. And rest on the breath with your mind, rest lightly. Like that dove of peace, just rest very lightly on the breath. And when your mind wanders, just gently, very gently, bring it back to the breath as soon as you realize. We bring our mind back with loving kindness and compassion for ourselves.
and just keep your focus on the breath. And the breath will take you into a deep inner peace inside of you. And we surrender to this deep inner peace. Trusting the feeling of wanting to let go. Let go of the thoughts. Connect with the breath. And just let yourself dive into the peace and the stillness. Thoughts will still run in your mind. But they're not at the forefront of your mind. They're just movements in your mind. Your focus is on the breath. And as we connect with the peace, so we connect with our soul. Our soul is in constant peaceful meditation. And we join it in that place of peace. And realize this is the truth of who we are. We are peace. We are the light and the love we find here. This is our essential nature. And at this level of experience, we are all one in the peace. Your peace is my peace. It is all peace, an all-pervading peace. Now let this feeling of peace, let it fill your whole being. You can imagine it like a beautiful white light radiating from your heart, the center of your chest. Let your mind be filled with peace. And this piece is limitless. I want you to imagine that piece radiating out into the aura, the energy field that surrounds your physical body. And this is how we raise our vibrational energy. This is how we align with our soul.
And I want you to imagine that that light, that peace that's radiating out from your being is connecting with the peace radiating out from all beings on our planet who are at peace, who are meditating for peace. So that we all send light into the aura of our beautiful planet. So that all who reside there live in an environment of peace and love. So let your compassion for humanity, your desire to end all suffering, radiate out. So we surround the earth in a beautiful light. And that light pours down into the hearts and minds of all. And in this way, we envisage peace on earth. See more and more people coming into a place of their heart and radiating light. Shining that light in the areas of darkness that need healing. Helping all to find that middle way, the soul path of understanding. Know that we are aided in these endeavors by the entities in the angelic realm, by higher masters of wisdom, by those guardians and guides of the earth who seek to help, to heal, and to show us the way. Notice how when you radiate peaceful intention, it comes back to fill your being a hundredfold. This is how we create peace on earth. And now slowly start to arise from the meditation, but allow all the goodness, the truth and the peace to remain in your being, in your heart and in your aura as you slowly come back into your physical body. 
Take a nice deep breath in, just moving, but keep your eyes closed for a moment. Now we're going to open our eyes, but we're going to open our eyes with pure awareness so that in those first few moments, we see the world from the eyes of our soul. So when you're ready, just gently opening your eyes with full awareness. May all beings be at peace. May all beings find true peace in their own hearts. Namaste.